In an earlier video, we introduced the concept of conjugate acid-base pairs, which are molecules that are related by the loss or gain of a single proton. And we noted when we introduced this idea that one reason it's useful is we can see conjugates on either side of a chemical equation for a Bronsted acid base or proton transfer reaction. In this video, we're going to learn the other reason why recognizing conjugate pairs is extremely useful. And it has to do with being able to gain information about, for example, the Kb for a conjugate base if we know the Ka of the corresponding acid. And likewise, for bases, if we know Kb for a base, we can infer Ka for the conjugate acid of that base. We're going to do a little derivation to see how this works in this video and then apply it throughout the remainder of the video. Very important conceptual idea. The stronger a base, the weaker its conjugate acid. And the weaker a base, the stronger its conjugate acid is the conclusion that we're going to come to. And this is what I like to refer to as the conjugate seesaw for reasons that will become apparent. Let's start with a little derivation, though. And I want to do two things that actually we've already done, first and foremost. First, we're going to define Ka. This is the chemical equation corresponding to the equilibrium constant Ka. It's the reaction of an acid with water. And then I want to define Kb for the conjugate base. And so this is the reaction of the conjugate base, A minus, with water to form HA and hydroxide, and the Kb expression is given on the right hand side there. Next what I want to do is multiply those two equations together. Essentially multiply the left hand sides together and multiply the right hand sides together. So on the left hand side we get Ka times Kb and on the right hand side we get a bunch of concentration terms. A minus times H3O plus, that's from the Ka expression. HA times OH minus, that's from the Kb expression and in the denominator we get HA times A minus. Now, we'll notice very quickly that some things divide out here, right? There's A minus in the numerator and in the denominator, so those divide out. And we've got molarities of HA in the numerator and HA in the denominator, so those also divide out. And all we're left with is the molarity of H3O plus times the molarity of OH minus. But this is equal to Kw. So we've actually landed at a really interesting result, that the product of Ka for an acid and Kb for its conjugate base is equal to Kw. And if we take the base 10 logarithm, negative base 10 logarithm of both sides, to kind of get this equation into P world, as I like to call it, we end up with pKa plus pKb is equal to pKw, which at 25 degrees C is equal to 14. So similar to pH and pOH in a solution, actually, mathematically anyway, pKa for an acid and pKb for the conjugate base have a sort of seesaw relationship. When one goes down, say pKa goes down because the acid gets stronger, pKb for the conjugate base must go up, meaning the conjugate base gets weaker. This is the conjugate seesaw. This figure gives us a sense of how the conjugate seesaw works in practice. So along the top scale, we have a set of acids with their Ka values. The strongest acids are on the left. That's things like H3O+. And on the right, we have weaker and weaker acids. And then on the bottom scale, we have the corresponding conjugate bases with their Kb values. And notice that in each case, the product of the two is 10 to the negative 14. So for H3O+, plus, the Ka is 1.0 by definition, and the Kb for H2O is 10 to the negative 14. For HClO2, Ka is 10 to the negative 2, and for ClO2-, minus, Kb is 10 to the negative 12. Again, the product, 10 to the negative 14. And that applies to the other acids here as well. Ka times Kb for the conjugate base is always equal to 10 to the negative 14. The point at the top of this slide is important. This applies only to conjugate pairs, of course. Any old acid and base, their Ka and Kb values won't necessarily multiply out to 10 to the negative 14, or the pKa and pKb won't sum to 14, right? The relation between the acid and base has to be a conjugate one. They have to differ only in the presence or absence of a single proton. And this applies equally well to bases in their conjugate acids. For example, we could look at this as Kb for a base along the bottom scale 
times Ka for the conjugate acid along the top scale equals 10 to the negative 14th, equals Kw, right? That's mathematically and really conceptually equivalent to the acid conjugate base idea. And so this table just, again, lists a series of acids on the left, conjugate bases on the right, the strongest acids at the top and the weakest acids at the bottom. And on the base column, notice we've got the weakest bases up here at the top. Perchlorate ion is the weakest base in this series. And the strongest bases at the bottom, CH3 minus, or what the table calls methide ion, is the strongest base in this series. Methane is the weakest acid in this series. That's the conjugate acid of the strongest base, CH3 minus. And the conjugate acid of ClO4 minus, HClO4, that's perchloric acid, and that's the strongest acid in this series. So it's the conjugate seesaw in action. And this idea, while it's useful quantitatively, of course, to get Ka from Kb or vice versa, the qualitative implications here are profound. If you know that an acid is strong, something like nitric acid, HNO3, you know that its conjugate base is typically negligibly weak. NO3 minus is not basic at all when dissolved in water. Likewise, if you know a base is really strong, you know CH3 minus is really strong, you know that its conjugate acid, CH4, is extremely weak, negligibly weak. CH4 is not an acid to any appreciable degree when it's dissolved in water. In this practice problem, we're going to apply the idea of the conjugate seesaw to calculate a Ka for an acid from Kb of the conjugate base. Or you could think about it like Ka for the conjugate acid from Kb of the base. So Kb of the nitrite ion is given here, 2.17 times 10 to the negative 11th. And the first thing we want to do is understand and write very clearly the Ka and Kb values here, what species they refer to, and what their product is equal to. So Kb for NO2 minus times Ka for the conjugate acid HNO2 is equal to Kw. This is the conjugate seesaw in equation form. And we can plug in the numbers that are given, rearranging first to isolate Ka. So we divide both sides by Kb and get Ka is equal to Kw divided by Kb. Then we plug in what we know. Kw is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th power. Kb given 2.17 times 10 to the negative 11th power. And this allows us to arrive at Ka is equal to 4.6 times 10 to the negative 4th power. So here, the nitrite ion is quite a weak base with a very, very small Kb value. HNO2 is a reasonably strong weak acid. It's on the stronger side of the weak acids, we might say, with a pKa, with a Ka rather, of 4.6 times 10 to the negative 4. Now we can also do this math in P world, so to speak, applying the pKa and pKb version of the conjugate seesaw. So here is the conjugate seesaw in equation form again, just with pKa and pKb instead of Ka and Kb themselves. And so pKa for the acid HNO2 plus pKb for the conjugate base, NO2 minus, is equal to pKw, which here is 14. And we know what pKb of NO2 minus is by taking the negative base 10 logarithm of 2.17 times 10 to the negative 11th. That comes out to 10.66. And so solving for pKa of HNO2 here, we arrive at pKa is equal to 3.34 in this case. So we can do this math in sort of k world to find ka, or take the negative base 10 logarithm of both sides of that conjugate seesaw equation to arrive at pka or pkb.